Hey everyone, Tom here from Tom's AWI Review. Uh, so today, uh, I know it's been a while, but I'm going to be doing an unboxing video. Um, so many of you will know that 90% of my videos on AWI figures come from Perry Miniatures. At least the ones that I've been doing recently with the Pennsylvania line. Um, I haven't actually done an unboxing video on this though, and... and I think it's really important to talk about that. Um, <clears throat> and I just wanted to throw out a couple of things here. Um, so I have I have the British AWI box set and the Continental Line Continental Infantry, excuse me, box set uh, from Perry, and they were provided by Perry to review. Um, funny story, well, funny to me anyway. Uh, I had originally requested that they send over. American Civil War miniatures for me to review because I've reviewed so many or I should say I've featured so many Perry miniatures from the AWI line I thought it only fitting to expand this channel a little bit and talk about some of the American Civil War figures out there um, unfortunately there was a miscommunication and I had asked for ACW which is American Civil War however and you'll see this on the side of the box Maybe if it focuses. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, the ACW turns out to be the, for some reason or another, uh, listed as AWI. Because this box set here, British Infantry AW200, is this box set, which I have right here American War of Independence. So apparently there was some miscommunication and as a result I ended up with more AWI miniatures. But it's only fitting that I do an actual review of these since I feature so many of them on the channel. Um, so let's get started. Um, the Continental Line Infantry I have one quarrel with. Now the box art for both of these is just phenomenal. I mean they really went all out with the, with the box art here. Um, let me see if I can get a higher shot of that so you can kind of see and of course the lights glaring on it there we go that's better so you can see the riflemen you can see the officers the drummer the color bearer you know um, really well made box art for the Continental Line Infantry and also the British Infantry as well um, and I like this because the box art shows the poses uh, some of the poses that you're going to get in the box. So, uh, but you'll notice here that it says 1775 to 1783, which is correct, right? That's the years of the American War for Independence. 1776 to 1783. I have a quarrel with that, Perry, because, um, or I should say Perry Miniatures, because um, the war started in 1775. These uniforms... Um, the Continental Line existed in 1775, even though the con even though the the uh, United States declared independence in 1776, the Continental Line existed in 1775. So um, I know it's too late to change that; it's already on your marketing and everything like that. But this is now the second time now I've had a tell a, a, a British manufacturer about about the American War of Independence um, being a 1775 to 1783. Because, dang it, Warlord Games does the same thing. Warlord Games lists the AWI from 1776 to 1783, and it, I'm sorry, but that is not the correct year. And we need to change that, daggummit. So, alright, enough of that whining. Um, so, box art is phenomenal. Uh, both sets give you 38 figures. Okay, now let me show you here. Let me do a little flip around. I should do two separate videos, but honestly, I, I don't want to waste anyone's time with that. I want to make sure that... Um... So, one thing is that the British box set has two casualty figures that come with it. So, you get 36 figures plus two casualties with unit bases and a painting guide. The um, Continental Line uh, box set has 38 figures, no unit casualties... Um, both have flag guides, uh, sorry, flags, uniform guides, and unit bases in them. Um, so, you know, and 
I just want to say something about about that real quick. Um, so I have quite a number of the box sets from Perry uh, that I've acquired myself, and so I have a ton of these um, casualty figures for the British. Um, the good news is, and I'll show you when I unbox it. You can use one of those two figures as a Continental Line or a Continental Infantry Regiment um, casualty. And I'll show you why you can do that in a second. But let's start with the Continental Line. Okay, since I'm doing a lot of Continental Line, we will unbox here one handedly. Apparently, we're going to unbox without grabbing the painting guide. It's upside down, that's why. So let's flip it around. All right, zooming in for a second just so I can pull this out. Sorry about that, guys. All right, back out we go. So, here is the painting guide that you get uh, with the Continental Infantry box. It is uh, actually six pages, which is very, it's like a huge painting guide. It's bigger than the one for Warlord Games, which they just came out with. Um, and that, theirs isn't even a painting guide. It's more of like a flag, a flight. But you get this roughly a, a really decent amount of flags in this as well um so a lot of people have asked me how accurate this is and i will say that it's proportionally accurate um it's a really good start you need to do some of your own additional research because for pennsylvania the associators that they have here are only those from philadelphia these are only Philadelphia Associators. In fact, uh, every county in Pennsylvania had their own associator, uh, own associators, and, and each of their uh, regiments was, was different too. So this is only suitable really for the Philadelphia Associators. And also the Pennsylvania line changed designations later in the war too. It went from being um, battalions to actual regiments in 1777. And each of these designators, first, second, third, went up a number. So the first became the second, the second became the third, the third became the fourth, and so on. Um, and their uniforms changed quite a bit um, in that time period. So this is good, a good starting point, but do your own research, get additional resources. I'll do a video on additional resources later on. But um, So anyway, coloring, this is the painting guide and the um, flag sheet, okay, which are very substantial, very good. And I'm trying to rush through here because I know that you want to see the British too. And I want to make sure that I'm not wasting anyone's time. So, here is the Continental Infantry Command Sprue. Now, I've got... I, I have to say that the sculpts are phenomenal. Alright, so... What else, whatever you can say about this, you can say that Perry sculpts a good miniature. Um, everything about these guys. Details are... Phenomenal. Let's zoom in here so you can get a good look. Okay. I mean, everything just so finely sculpted. Very little flashing. Just so amazing. Um, Perry really always outdoes themselves. Um, really, really great work. The only... I only have two quarrels with this command sprue. Um... And they corrected it with the British Infantry Sprue. I'm hoping that any future set that they release for plastics it will be corrected as well. But my biggest concern with the sprue here is that you have to match up the backs, the, t the backs of these here, with the right guys. And they're not all the same. Like this guy right here, you'll notice he's got two sets of straps okay and if you look on the back okay he's got two straps but if you use oops, there we go. this for example for that guy he's gonna have a strap that goes nowhere so you got to make sure you use the right and they're not marked which is sad so you have to really kind of figure it out. I made the mistake of doing it with another guy at one point and I was kind of disappointed and it was too late to correct it without destroying the miniature. So, you know, um, so it does require you to just pay attention to what you're doing. The other issue that I have 
is that you only get four and you only get one flag bearer and and that's sort of disappointing i'm sorry that's not true you get two flags i apologize uh scratch that you get two flags but you only get four miniatures to represent um your command sprue thankfully um there's a lot of diversity you can do with the main sprue so you get one of these which is four of your 38 guys right and then you get another 30 uh, i'm sorry you get 34 other miniatures all right which is the basically the privates right the the grunts if you will um you can actually take from the command sprue and put them on these figures to kind of expand your command if you wanted to so there's that option you have some more variety all right the other cool thing about the Continental Line Infantry is that you can make them militia if you want to. You don't have to paint them as Continental Infantry. So you have some flexibility here. I hope, I really, really hope that Perry releases some militia figures in plastic in the future. Um, a lot of people have said this to me, uh, and I've read about it on, on forums and various things, that they want to see Perry release Colonial or, con or, or Colonial Militia uh, for the AWI series in plastic, having the same sort of setup with various arm poses and things like that, because, you know, it just gives it more variety to your armies, but also, if you have to, you can paint these lapels and, and all the facings the same color as the jacket to achieve that look. So you don't have to paint these guys up as infantry, and you, you, you do have the option here of more relaxed poses for carrying their muskets and firelocks around. So you can get that militia feel with this. Uh, and the diversity of hats obviously helps, right? And then here you have your standard, you know, fixed bayonets at, you know, at the shoulder marching poses, right? So, you, you know, you get enough arms and things like that for variety to give it, you know, the feel that this is a ragtag regiment or the more, you know, you could do a more traditional view of the Continental Line post 1777 or 178, where, you know, right after Valley Forge and they're marching to Monmouth and they're all well trained and Von Steuben really, you know, kicked him in the line and you get that. So you have a, a good variety here. You have like your, your bits, like your, your knapsacks and your trumplines and things like that so good variety and then you get so you get an additional 30 of these right 30 miniatures all together so you get six sprues with 30 miniatures like this and you also get riflemen and hunting shirts and actually they're not they don't have to be riflemen you can actually make them into line infantry with fire locks, they don't have to have the rifles. You have the option of using long rifles here. And you can make them militia by giving them more relaxed hand sprues, okay? But you can also make them, I'll zoom in here just so you can see it, you know, carry it correctly with the bayonet fixed. You don't need to have the um, uh, powder horn attached if you don't want to. And you have a variety of hats here, so you can give them cocked hats to make them infantry or riflemen giving them the round hats or even the option of light infantry with the light infantry hats so again two of these so you get four um infantry or riflemen in hunting shirts and that's basically it for uh for these guys um like i said i'm, I'm really excited about the uh the Perry Miniatures box uh, for cutting a line. I'm going to put them aside for now, though. All right. And now I'm going to show you the British box set here. Okay, so we're going to do this unboxing. Let's see if I can do this correctly this time. Okay. And one thing I didn't talk about with the um, the American uh, Continental Line Infantry is you get these bases. Um, these are really good for black powder. A lot of people will add their miniatures, you know, various ways on here. Um, I don't use these. I'm not saying that I won't ever use them, but I I want to use my miniatures for a lot more 
games. I don't want to just use them for black powder, right? Um, but for black powder users, you know, A+. plus. You get these awesome Renedra bases. Um, and you can see. And actually, these, these molds are... The plastic molds are produced by Renedra himself, or Renedra, however you pronounce it. So anyway, uh, onto the sprues. This you get six. Uh, is that a right? Yes, you get six of these, five miniatures each. All right, and uh, these are your privates, and they come with uh, two arm sprue options. Basically, they can be at the um, what they call. Um, um, Gosh, trail arms. Okay. The other option is them charging. So you have some variety here. You don't have to make them all the same. They can some can be at trail arms, some can be charging, you know, or you can do like a regiment where they're all they all look the same. It's up to you. Uh, you get more variety of hats here. Um, you get the unfolded um, cocked hat. So it's basically this, but just you know, with one side down. And you see that. <clears throat> various theaters of war, uh, and you also get these Saratoga hats. Um, Perry really likes Saratoga. Like, nearly all of their metal figures are Saratoga figures, and, um, you know, it's kind of a shame for the British, you know. Uh, there's so many more campaigns out there. Hopefully they expand it. I really hope to see them expand it more. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. So you get, you get five figures per sprue for, just like you do with the uh, continental line infantry. Um, and you also, the command sprue is pretty cool. And I'm going to show you that here as soon as I can get to it. All right, here's the command sprue. Now, you see here why I complained a little bit about the, um, uh, the Continental Infantry Command Sprue because this contains one, two, three, four, five, six command uh, sprue options. Now, obviously, the drummer is. I'm sorry, is that the drummer? Where's the drummer? Here's the drummer. The drummer's set. You can't change that guy. He's going to look this way. It is what it is. Uh, you get one drummer, but you get, you know, one, two, three, four, five other guys that you can use for your command squad. You have NCOs and officers and color bearers, and you have the option to switch these guys up any way you want. Very large selection variation here in, uh, in style. Like this guy here, for example, has like a, you know, his, his facings are folded in, okay? Um, some of these guys have gorgets. What are they in here? Like this guy. Some of them don't. You all have sashes. Um, so, and you also get the, uh, like I was saying earlier, you get the casualty figures. This guy right here, you can't see his facings. So you could paint this guy up theoretically as a continental line soldier, and it would be fine. You can get away with that. So, you know, you don't have to make this guy a British soldier if you don't want to. This guy you're kind of stuck with because his facings have the um, the decorations on them, the laces. So you have, you know, you're kind of stuck. You either have to paint them, kind of have to paint them up as a <clears throat> as a uh, British soldier or or an artilleryman if, if you wanted to. But that's really it. And again, you get the same differences in the hats and trampolines and the, you know, you have the option to give them foozles. Uh, I'm not even pointing out here. There's foozles, or you can give them, you know, the at you know at the trail arms. The bayonet's fixed, so you have the sword arms option here, which are over here. All right, and so you have that, and just like before, you you don't have to use those. You can use some of the inf regular infantry as a uh, command sprue options, and you get a four-page color sheet with this one. Still phenomenally detailed, really reliable, quite excellent, um, and then of course you get your flag options just like you do with the Continental Infantry. Uh, so you get the King's Colors and then you get three regimental flags with this. <clears throat> and you can choose, you know, obviously it's going to match the facing color that you go with. And the really cool thing is it gives you loyalist uh, colors as well. So, so that's uh, a pretty cool tidbit here. Um, 
so yeah, that and, I, and real quick, I'm just going to show you a couple of miniatures that I have put together from Perry, and hopefully my camera doesn't die here. I'm, I apologize also for the fact that they're kind of pushed to the side over here right now. Let me fix that a little bit here. Okay, so here are the two ways that I did the drummer for the British Infantry, because that's what I put together right now, was British Infantry. So this is the standard way. Obviously, the drum should be closer to the leg. I, it kind of messed up a little bit on that. I failed at the drummer pose for this, but this is a standard way to do it. And then this is kind of the alternate way that I did it, where I put the drum on the back, and I, I glued the drumstick a different way to kind of make it seem uh, like he was carrying it as opposed to playing a drum. He just had it in his hand. Uh, so, yeah, those are the drummers. And then here are some of the NCOs and officers here that I've put together. Just to show you some of the diversity here. Okay, you're not limited by which figures you can use for which. And I think that came out very well, actually. So you can see here I have them all. As, I'm paying these guys up as... Uh, um, loyalists, or I'm not quite sure what yet, maybe guards, but, um, so this, here's the, the officer, and here's a couple of his NCOs, Talon directing his troops in which direction to go, and here's one of the standard bears, and you'll notice, look how great these sculpts are, just oogle at them with me for a second, would you? see if I can focus on this guy. There we go. Look at the face detail, man. The buttons, the regimental, every strap connects to something. You know, my biggest problem with the Warlord game sets is that the straps don't connect to anything all the time. Like, here, take a look at this guy. Here's a guy that I was just, I, I just mocked him up to put together for, um, to try out some, this is from the Hessian Sprue, by the way, but all of them have this. Um, I mocked him up to try some inks and some washes on for some blue. And look at this. The canteen has no straps. It's like floating. It's like floating next to the haversack, right? There's no strap connecting that. It looks ridiculous. And when you paint it up, it, it's really obvious that it, there's no strap connecting to it. And it looks really bizarre. It looks like it's kind of inset into the, um, the haversack, which is not correct and and just looks terrible all right i don't have many complaints about warlord games figures but that really bothers me now look at this compared to the infantry for perry there's a strap that connects that canteen there's a strap that connects to the haversack there's a strap that connects to the can the, the cartridge box you know everything has a strap i mean the only thing that's missing it is the um the bayonet hidden behind you know, that's the only thing that you could say that doesn't really have a strap. But you know what? It looks appropriate. The miniature is proportional. The face is unique. The hair is unique. Everything about these miniatures is so finely, finely sculpted. So well sculpted. And there's hardly any flashing that it's it's ridiculous. Um, if, if you want quality miniatures... Uh, Warlord Games is good. Uh, Perry Miniatures is great. Really, really well sculpted, guys. And look at the detail on the freaking fire lock. You can even, you even see the, the butt plate on, on the brown vest. You see the, look at the fine detail. I'll zoom in even more on this if I can. Look at the fine detail on the fire lock. Every thing, the frizzin, the the hammer, or the cock rather, the um, the trigger, you can see everything. The flint, you see the detail on the uh, on the strapping. You see, you can see the detail on the ramrod. It's it's just incredible. I can't get over it. So anyway, guys. Um, that's my review, and, uh, I just wanted to, let me show you one more thing before I let you go here. Here's, uh, one of the, I cut, you can combine these. You don't have to make these guys singularly, you know, 
one box. You can see here, this is the body from the British command sprue and the head. And I used arms from the Continental Line Infantry sprue to create a unique officer that doesn't exist by itself in one particular sprue. And you can do that with these plastics because they're so versatile. And you can see he's got the spontoon here. Okay, and this is for one of my Pennsylvania line regiments that I'm working on right now. So, yeah, guys, um, this is my, my unboxing video for Perry Miniatures, the AWI sets, the two of them, the British Continental, I'm sorry, the British Infantry and the Continental Infantry. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found these miniatures uh, enticing and interesting and worth your time, and you're going to go out and purchase them right now. Um, throw Perry a bone if you have if you're interested. They do really finely great, you know, finely detailed sculpts, really great sculpts. Um, so anyway, uh, more from me later. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. Ta ta for now.